What's going on everybody? Welcome to part four of the web development with Python and Django tutorial series. In this video, what we're gonna be talking about is views and templates. So really the way that most of your pages are going to be served is via all the things to do with the MVC or model view controller framework where you're dealing with your models, you're dealing with models or your views are basically interacting with your models and then the controller obviously for the URL. So now we're kind of going to bring all three of those things together for the very first time. Woo! Let's get started. So I'm going to bop into uh, my site and actually everything's already open. So uh, everything is basically just where we left it off last time. So right now our homepage is still this and instead what we'd like to do is we're like I said we're kind of modeling this after pythonprogramming.net. So we have a little bit of a ways to go. So the first thing that I'd like to do is maybe just iterate over the tutorials. Right now our tutorials aren't very long, so we should be able to just like show the tutorials on the home page without, you know, taking up a ton of space. So the way that we can uh, get get to doing that is basically, I mean, we've already got the controller done bit done for the home page because if we come into here obviously we're serving a page already right so here we've already done that so it's already including um this almost looks like uh yeah we're not even in the same urls let's go to the main urls cool let me just close that one all right anyway here's our real home page it just says views.homepage so that's the one that we actually need to modify so views.py homepage right now we're just returning a simple http response but instead what we're going to do next is actually do a render of an actual template so lots of stuff to cover for sure so the first thing we're going to do is um, move this and we're actually just going to replace that with a render render and in render, there's basically uh, three major things that you're going to pass per render. Well, really two, but most likely all the time, like three. Anyway, first you're going to pass the request itself. Now, not all the time, not every time. Anyway, much of the time, and actually it's probably since this is being passed, most of the time you're not going to see people name these. I, I tend to see it's request, the template, and then um, the context is passed. Very infrequently do people actually name these uh, parameters, but I'm going to name them just for now, just so everybody understands what these parameters are, should you see them. So then you're going to pass template name. This is going to be main.home.html. Uh, and then finally, context. So this one you may not always have, but you're likely to have this most of the time. And I'm going to say it's tutorials, and I'll explain this in a moment, don't worry tutorials and then this would be a uh, tutorial dot objects dot all so um, so this is just the request that gets passed here you're just you're basically always gonna have this uh, this is so you can reference things um, inside of your template uh, to do with you know like your user and stuff like that then you've got template name this just tells Django where to find this specific template to, to be rendered then we've got the context. This is what we want to basically pass to our template and we can actually reference tutorial objects all now via the variable name tutorials. So that'll make more sense when we actually make this template because this template doesn't actually exist. So can I add a new, oh, I can't, can I? Ooh, I can. So <laughs> I'll just do it inside of here. So we've got main, um, We'll add basically main, we'll add a new folder templates. And then I'm going to do another new folder and I'm going to call this main. Cool. Did that work? I feel as the, oh, you know what? Okay, got to open it. Okay, cool. And now we've got main. Now nothing is in main. I'm going to say new file. Interesting. I thought I could. I guess I'll have to save as or something. <clears throat> anyway, what we're going to call this is it's home.html. And um, hello there. Uh, let me go file. Save as. Cool. Home.html. Okay, great. Save that. I'm going to come over to here and save this. And okay, save that. Let's just make sure that worked. 
didn't work. Name tutorial not. To, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, well, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Basically, to reference tutorial objects all, we have to uh, import it. So we're gonna say from period models. We're gonna import that tutorial model. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I want to make sure that template works. Okay, it does. All right, so now in this template here, let me explain something real quickly. So if we look at the path to this template, it's probably really small on your screen, but basically we're saying main templates, main home. Why are we doing that? Well, whenever we reference templates, Django is gonna look in all of your apps for the directory called templates. The problem is a lot of apps might have like a template called home or maybe main.html or header.html or, you know, think of all the, the iconic names of like the main page that you might have. There's a lot. So there might be overlappage happening there. Yes, that's a word. And um, so, so the way that we can overcome that is by uh, just inside of our templates directory, making another directory and the typical convention is just to call it the same name as your app. To me, I, I'm still kind of surprised that this is commonplace in Django still. I feel like template name, you should just do something like, I don't know, main colon the template and main there would be the app. And then that would be the template of that app. I, I wish they would do that. I, I just, like I said, I, I think this is kind of silly to, <laughs> to do it this way, but basically what Django does is it compiles all the templates. So you could in theory have overlapping template names, especially when you're using like other people's apps uh, and you didn't go through all of their templates to make sure there was no uh, cross crossing of, of names. So anyways, this is how we do it. Like I said, I feel like that's kind of weird that that still exists today, but um, that's the Django way. <laughs> I'm just used to Django being so supreme in everything that they do that this feels weird. But anyways, that's the way it's done. So uh, we are now rendering. And let me just be pep eight here. Uh, and I'm just going to do this actually. Get rid of that. <clears throat> anyway, coming over here to our home.html, let's talk about a couple of things. So inside of Django's templating, it is very similar to Jinja 2 templating. I I, I I don't recall. I, I think at one point it was Jinja 2, and maybe at some point they tr transferred to their own templating. Um, but I might have been wrong all this time, and it's always been its own uh, templating. But it is very similar, but just know it is not the same. So, um, but certain things are the same. So, for example, if you want to reference a variable, you use these double curly braces, right? And you'll pass this variable. And then if you want to do some sort of logic, you'll do uh, these like curly brace percentage sign logic, and then you end the large logic that way. The other thing of note is if you're going to do a for loop or an if statement, all this kind of stuff, you start with four, and then you would end. You have to actually specify the end uh, of the thing. So you'll see what I'm talking about uh, in a little bit. Actually, I, I believe you, I don't know if you can get away with no space, but I believe you, the, you, you do end for no space. Anyways, um, we'll do some real examples here in a little bit. So, uh, so the first thing that we should do is like if we go to this views, we're passing these tutorials anyways under the guise or under the variable name tutorials. So the way that we can, and what we want to do is iterate over them. So the way that we could iterate over those tutorials is indeed with for loop. So for, we'll just call it toot in uh, tutorials. I don't think I capitalized the T. Let me go back and check that real quick. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. So for tutorial or for toot in tutorial, uh, and then we want to end for now, uh, what we would say is like, for example, we could just say tut, um, and that'll give us like just the object, right? To be, and then print tutorial. And as you can see, uh, they're just kind of in line with each other. And again, this is because we changed, don't forget that string method. So before, remember I was saying what this was for? Uh, if I was to comment that out, that's kind of gross. Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> uh, okay, come over here, boop. See, you see this like tutorial object one, tutorial object two, that's like totally meaningless to us. So that's the reason why we do this dunder string method here. Uh, Cause as we iterate over them, should we ever do that? 
uh, it's it's more clear what it is. Uh, but the next thing is, of course, that's um, a little hard to read. So instead, what I'm going to say is we're going to encase this in paragraph tags. So that should give it its own line entirely. Save that. Come back to our website to be print tutorial. So these are the tutorial titles. Uh, we could get even more fancy dancy because we could say tutorial dot tutorial uh, title. Uh, then we could come. Let's just do boop boop and tutorial published, published, and then tutorial content. <clears throat> and then why don't we just issue a couple of breaks? So just be like some blank lines, save that, come back to our website, refresh. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is this is kind of ugly. Uh, it looks, it's like actually HTML, but clearly it's been escaped HTML. And in fact, if we view the source, we can see sure enough, that's escaped, right? We can see the actual uh, codes that would generate that. So um, how, do we, how do we handle for this? Well, uh, just like um, Jinja 2, we can use the safe flag. So under tutorial content, we can do a little bar there and then say safe. And this just says, hey, this is safe. You can actually render this HTML. You wouldn't want to do that everywhere. Uh, in this case, the only people who can publish a tutorial would be a super user, like an admin. So that's totally fine. But of course, if you have like a, a forum or something like that, you would never want to let the forum post be quote unquote safe, right? If anybody could could issue it, then someone could like write in some uh, some JavaScript or something, uh, and it could it could go south really really fast. So uh, keep that in mind. But in this case, we actually want it to be HTML friendly, so we want to display it. Okay. So the next thing is. Um, you might be wondering, hey, that's not looking like what we had in the admin. 120 admin, there we go. If we click on tutorial and we go to the print tutorial, for example, what happened to this beautiful syntax highlighting that we had? What gives, bro? Um, well, what we need here is some uh, CSS, cascading style sheet, and also some JavaScript. So what we're gonna do is bring in both. And since we're at home.html, we'll just do it all in this same uh, file. So the first thing is for uh, static. So first of all, the CSS already exists. It was when we grabbed the tiny MCE app, we actually got their CSS. So we're actually just gonna use theirs. It's already here. Now to use something from our static directory, the first thing we need to do is load static. Unlike um, like Flask, for example, if you're familiar, uh, the static directory is just always accessible in Flask, whereas in Django, if you go to slash static, you won't find a directory there. It's not like publicly accessible, basically. All the stuff in static is in Django accessible. You're just not gonna find a, 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 like a directory structure like you would in Flask. I'm sure you can hide it in Flask. I just, it's never been important enough to me to worry about it. But anyways, uh, so now what we wanna do is we wanna add that style sheet. Uh, sheet. So we're gonna add a link here, and in here is where we are going to pass some more logic. So again, just like this was logic here, you can also use logic in string form. So in this case, this is kind of some weird logic that you'll type, nothing really else is gonna act like this. Oh, actually, probably what I wanna do I think we would get away with this either way, but I'm gonna use single quotes here just so we don't, so the HTML itself doesn't look funky. But this is where we're gonna specify the location. So, and this would be already in a static directory, just like template static is loaded in the same way. It's slash static. Um, <clears throat> so again, the handling is, is no different than the way that we handle for here, right? It's already looking for a templates directory, so it's gonna look for <clears throat> the app name and then the actual template. The same thing is true with static, right? It's app name, and then if you had further directories, sure. So, um, okay, so prism and uh, prism.css is the name of that style sheet. And then um, we'll put rel style sheet. Okay, so that's how we can load in our actual style sheet. And in fact, this should probably be between some head tags. Head, 
head. Again, this is not a uh, HTML tutorial. If you don't know what this kind of stuff means, um, I encourage you to go find an HTML tutorial. Uh, this is just the stuff that gets loaded, like some initial JavaScript, if the JavaScript needs to be loaded immediately anyways. Uh, CSS, meta tags, stuff like that, it's gonna go in the head. Then down here, this is like the body of, uh, this is just like basically everything the browser renders tends to go into the body. So we'll do this, tab that stuff over. Great, and then now we'll load in some JavaScript. So uh, let's do script sor source. And again, <clears throat> we already have uh, this as well. This is the JavaScript that will add our syntax highlighting. So static, and again, this is tiny. Um, and in fact, uh, single quotes here. Tiny, and I think it's actually tiny MCE. So let me throw an MCE here as well. Tiny MCE JS for JavaScript, and then prism dot JS. Great, and then we'll close off the script tag. Okay, uh, let me save that. We'll come back to this in a moment if this works. Cool. If it doesn't work, anytime you've got CSS or you're trying to load anything with a path, you can press like F12 in uh, at least in Chrome and just hit refresh. And if there are if something's not working the way that you expect it to, you'll probably have thrown an error that you can come into console and read. Most of the time, it'll be like, "Hey, I'm not finding something at this location." Um, so yeah. So in this case, everything appears to work. We've got the syntax highlighting. Yay! Congratulations. Uh, real briefly, I know this is not an HTML tutorial. I just want to say sometimes we're going to load scripts in the head. Sometimes we're going to load them at the end. In general, you load JavaScript when you need it and not a moment before, right? So uh, because the JavaScript is like with the uh, style sheet, you need to load that immediately so the browser knows how to style things underneath it. With the JavaScript, you can actually modify things after the page has been loaded. So in general, we'd like to load the page first, then worry about all the JavaScript stuff. Uh, that's why if you've ever tried to parse something with Python, often if, if it's like a table that's loaded with JavaScript, when you go to parse it with Python, there's like nothing in that table because you made initially when you make that request, it doesn't actually populate, right? It populates a little bit after and that helps with like load times and stuff like that. So anyways, um, it's, it's whenever you need it. Sometimes you need it immediately, sometimes you don't. So anyways, here in this case, we don't need it immediately. So we put it at the bottom. Okay, so I think that's probably a good stopping point. Uh, things are pretty darn ugly still, and eventually we want to have be able to have things like nav bars and buttons, like clicking the login button, and, um, and probably have the tutorials themselves be styled in a little bit different way. I mean, a lot of things like this is quite ugly. I'm not saying I'm a design genius or anything, but this is a little more pretty to look at at least, and we've got all these little functionalities and stuff like that. So what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial is talking a little bit about design. Like I said, I'm no art artist, uh, but what I tend to use is a CSS framework called materialize.css. If we were to check out, oops, not F12. <laughs> see, in this case, we've already got some things. It's probably, let's see, is this for something to do with search? Anyways, I'll have to look at that later. Uh, view source, uh, if we check, we can see we've actually got materialize.css here. It is a custom materialized CSS. I'll show you guys how to do that as well. But anyways, that's what we're gonna be focusing on in the next tutorial is using a CSS framework. Uh, we're really hopefully only spend like one tutorial on all of that. You'll be expected to <laughs> uh, branch off on your own if you wanna learn more about design. That's not really the, the purpose of this series, uh, but it, it's not really fun if our whole website looks like this, it's kind of uh, trashy at this stage. So we'll get that fixed right up. Anyways, uh, that's what we'll be doing in the next tutorial. Quick shout out to my most recent channel members, Thomas Randall, Eric Gomez, Payman, AGK, and Hao Cheng. Thank you guys very much for your support. It let's me do what I love to do every day. So you guys are freaking awesome. I will see you guys in the next video.